wildfires have existed on Earth for millions of years. And from ground fires to crown fires, they can behave in many different ways. But there is one fire behaviour that is arguably among the most captivating and dynamic of them all. Firewells are rapidly spinning vortexes of flame and smoke. And they can range from the relatively common small firewells all the way to the very rare large firewells, which can rival genuine tornadoes for their size and ferocity. Now an example of just how powerful these vortexes can grow to be was seen in the 2018 Californian car fire. This firewell grew to such a size where it rated an F3 on the enhanced Vegeta scale and was not only strong enough to create extreme fire conditions on the ground, but was also a contender for pyrotornado genesis, where a wildfire had spawned a genuine tornado. And this is not the only time where a firewell has grown to such a size where it rivaled genuine tornadoes for their size and ferocity. Because in 2001, during the Australian Canberra bushfires, a firewell was generated which scientists would later argue to be the very first case of pyrotornado genesis, where a bushfire created the genuine tornado. Now the scientists found that because this fire tornado would lift off the ground and then reconnect further down the path, like a genuine tornado might, and it was also linked to an enormous pyrocumulonimbus cloud, which is essentially a fire-generated thunderstorm. That this event wasn't just a fire whirl, and it was in fact the very first documented case of pyrotornado genesis. But to gain a basic understanding of how fire whirls work, we first need to have a look at the driving forces behind these events. And chief among these forces is vorticity. Now vorticity is a concept used in fluid dynamics and it can be related to the amount of rotation or circulation in a fluid. And if you look around, you can find examples of vorticity scattered throughout your daily life. But when we're talking about vorticity in firewells, we need that interaction to occur between the atmosphere and the fire itself. And there are a number of different ways in which this can occur. One example of where vorticity can be created in the air is when you have one air mass moving faster than another. When this occurs, you will begin to see vorticity being created between the two air masses. And an example of that can be seen here, because as the wind moves across the water and some water spray is being picked up, you can see an area of vorticity that is being created between two different air masses. Another way in which vorticity can be created is if there's some kind of physical barrier that blocks the airflow across the landscape. When this occurs, the air is then forced around the barrier, and as the air moves past the barrier, it can then move back into the space that was shielded by the barrier. And this in turn creates vorticity. Now this barrier doesn't necessarily need to be a physical object like a cliff face or a mountain. It can also be the fire itself. And an example of that can be seen here. Because as the prevailing winds are being pushed down the fire front, an area of vorticity is being created at the head of the fire. And this vorticity has then gone on to create a firewell. But vorticity alone is not enough to create a firewell. Because firewells also require the vertical movement of air, flames and smoke. And this vertical movement is achieved via convection. Now one example where the heat required for convection can be found is the sun itself. And as you can see here, as the sun heats the landscape, it can heat the land unevenly. If this happens, then what we can see is one area being heated more than the other areas around it. And as this area begins to heat up, the air can begin to move vertically. And as the air moves up, more air can be drawn in to replace it. Now, as this process continues, we can begin to see vorticity being created by the inward rushing of air. Now, this is an example of how a dust devil can be formed. And dust devils are similar to firewells 
in many ways. But dust devils gain their energy from the sun and the heating of the land, whereas fire wells gain their energy from the fire itself. And as a result, fire wells are distinctly different events from dust devils. But the question remains, what is it about fire wells that makes the fire burn with much greater flame heights and much higher intensity than the surrounding flames? And for the answer to that question, we need to look to a phenomenon known as cyclotrophic flow. Now this term relates to a balance between a low pressure area, which has been created by the high temperatures of the fire, and the outwardly moving centripetal force, which is created by the rotation of the fire wheel. Now this balance means that we see a separation between the products of combustion within the fire wheel and the air surrounding the vortex. Now this means that those products of combustion can be concentrated and stretched out vertically within the vortex. Now this also means that those products of combustion are being concentrated as they are being ignited. And this in turn can create very high temperatures, which goes on to deepen the low pressure area and therefore continues to feed one of the main driving forces of the fire wheel. Now all of these different forces are working together to sustain the fire wheel, which means if one of these forces breaks down, the fire wheel will also begin to break down. And it is because of this complex, dynamic and elusive nature that fire wheels are arguably one of the most captivating, intriguing and potentially hazardous fire behaviours to occur on our planet.